Once upon a time, there was a wee enchanted cottage in the woods. The half-timbered structure with its stone mullion windows was built in 1553, the year when poor Lady Jane Grey was Queen of England for only nine days. Thankfully, the simple lives of the inhabitants of our cottage were untouched by the troubles of humans. Its first tenants were Mr. and Mrs. Theophilus Wren, thus the cottage's name, but they had long ago flown the coop, as you might say. Many generations had passed their lives within those humble walls, and many a story could be told of them, but at present it is the cozy home of Isaac Newton. Like his venerable namesake, Mr. Newton was a learned man of many osophies, who spent his days happily amid his hefty tomes. During the holidays, he was inclined to share a cup of cheer with a woodland neighbor, and so invited Miss Thomason, who lived in a hollow in the oak grove. He thought her quite amiable when they had chanced to meet, but as he waited for her arrival, he began to get nervous. I wonder if it was prudent to ask a virtual stranger to call. I haven't the faintest idea of what we might converse upon. Uh, besides, I could be reading so many interesting books instead. It was too late, for he espied Miss Thomason heading towards the cottage. The weather was unseasonably warm, so warm that Miss Thomason needed no shawl, though she had taken extra care in starching and ironing her very best apron. Good day to you, Mr. Newton, she said with a polite curtsy, or should I call you Sir Isaac? It was most hospitable for you to have me over. Oh, come in, come in, Miss Tullison. The hearth is aglow with a good fire and the kettle is coming to the boil. I've baked apple tarts for us to enjoy. I hope you like them. The apple is from the manor house's garden just up the hill. It was quite laborious to carry the fruit home, but I think you'll find it worth my effort. Oh, I confess, I have a sweet tooth and apple tarts are my very favorite thing to eat. Indeed, they look scrumptious. Miss Thomason studied the fine pewter plates in the cupboard, the stockings hung by the fire, and the most magnificently festooned tree she had ever seen in her life. Indeed, you keep your house quite orderly for a bachelor. Well, I always say an ordered house reflects an ordered mind. Do you agree? Of course, a feminine touch would add a softness to the environment. Mr. Newton didn't know what to say. Oh, dear me, he thought. I wonder perhaps Miss Thomason perceives my invitation as an intention toward her. In truth, Miss Thomason did have very warm feelings towards Mr. Newton, and she was wondering if any of the prettily wrapped gifts might be for her. Despite his trepidations and her expectations, a most pleasant time was enjoyed by the two. Neither of them knew there was another visitor soon to be knocking at the door. Oh, why, Miss Philippa, what a pleasant surprise. I hope I'm not intruding. Mr. Newton was relieved to have another party join them so as to avoid any uncomfortable intimacy. No intrusion at all, do come in. I just baked a sponge cake, and as it was too much for me to eat alone, I thought the right thing was to share it with you. But I confess I have a sweet tooth and sponge cake is my very favorite thing to eat. What a pickle I'm in, Mr. Newton thought, as he immediately realized he had said a similar compliment to Miss Thomason. He was certain he had injured her feelings. He stuttered. Uh, you, you, you must be acquainted with Miss Thomason. The two of you are near neighbors. The two women were very much acquainted. However, they were on ill terms over a long-ago disagreement, which neither could recall the reason for, but still held tightly to the perceived wrongdoing of the other. 
the tension between them was thick enough to cut with a knife. Poor Mr. Newton was at a loss. Even though he was quite full with his apple tart, he ate two slices of sponge cake, saying between bites, I do believe apple tarts and sponge cake are equally my favorite things to eat. When the clock struck the hour, Mr. Newton stood up and saw the ladies to the door. He had not given either of them any hope of an engagement, and in the end, it had been a most memorable yuletide. Meanwhile, upstairs in Wren Cottage, a very different scene is playing out. The hour is late, and Mr. Newton's nephews, who are visiting, are supposed to be tucked up in bed and dreaming of sugar plums. But Nathaniel Mouse is as studious as his uncle and can never have enough to read. And little Bunny is wide awake, for this is his very first Yuletide and he is too excited to sleep. What was that clattering on the rooftop? Little Bunny asked. Oh, I didn't hear anything, Nathaniel said absent-mindedly. It sounded like hooves clumping about. It's your imagination. Or maybe it's Uncle Newton cleaning out the chimney flue. Little Bunny could constrain himself no more. Quick as a jackrabbit, he jumped from bed and down the stairs he hopped, taking them two by two. To his great surprise, Uncle Newton was nowhere to be seen. Instead, there stood old St. Nick himself. Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. Little Bunny was so surprised to see the jolly old elf, he didn't know what to say. Now, have you been a good little boy? Little Bunny was in a quandary as to whether he should tell the truth. Fiddle diddly, I don't want a stocking full of coal. Now, come, come, tell Santa what mischief you've been up to. I stole turnips from Mrs. Piper's garden and figs from her orchard, but I was. Ho, 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 ho. Dear little bunny, that's not so very bad. Though promise me next time you'll ask permission from Mrs. Piper. Little bunny agreed. And then the good-hearted saint gave him a candy cane and a magic lantern and with a wiggle of his nose disappeared up the chimney. And that, dear friends, is the tale of Wren Cottage. I hope you too will enjoy as magical a yuletide as our woodland friends.